Hello and welcome to Informally Formal. We have with us in our studio today, engineer A.K.M. Feroz, a 35 year veteran of the power sector. Most recently as the immediate past managing director of Energy Generation Company of Bangladesh, EGCB is I think what it is called. Uh, before that, 17 years with Bangladesh Power Development Board uh, nine years with Power Grid of Bangladesh, 10 years with Asian Development Bank, a well-traveled, a very knowledgeable person in the power sector in Bangladesh that very many people know, especially if they are from the energy sector. So a very warm welcome to you, Firoz. Thank you very much, Akbar, for inviting me in this session. All right, fantastic. So uh, we'll go right into our program, uh, Firoz. Uh, my first question to you, would be to paint a picture for us uh, as to what the scenario is in the power sector in Bangladesh. Over to you. Akbar, you know the power sector has improved a lot since the last 10 to 12 years. I give you some scenario in this sector. Between 2009 and 2020, let us see, the power plant in 2009 was only 27, and now it is 144. The generation was around 4,900 megawatts. At, in 2009, and now it is about 25,000 megawatt. Transmission line, 8,000 8, kilometer, and now it has been, it is around 13,000 kilometer. Distribution line also we have expanded. It was uh, in uh, 260,000 kilometer, and now it is 600,000 kilometer. Wow. If we talk about the power reach or access to power, it was 47%, and now it is 99% access to power the population is now accessing power. Per capita consumption was uh, 220 kilowatt hour and it is about 512 kilowatt hour. System loss, which, which is a lot, a lot of uh, talked about uh, subject, it has reduced to 8.73%. It was in 2009, it was 14.33%. And once it was about more than 30% uh, wow. years back. So it has improved a lot. And the power sector as a whole has improved uh, tremendously. And there was a good leadership. I must thank uh, Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina to take a bold step in power sector for the development of power sector. Initially, the ADP was only 26.77 million in 2009. And now the ADP is about 266 million. 266 million taka. And the implementation of ADP Initially, there was not, it was not implemented about 70%, 80%, and now it is 100% being implemented by power sector. So it is working like a miracle in the power sector. Uh, Engineer Feroz, uh, listening to you, that reminds me, actually, when I came back from uh, States after many decades yeah. in 2000, end of 2008, <clears throat> I still remember when uh, we used to have power for an hour, uh, so I would uh, basically chill the room and then uh, wait another couple of hours before the power would come back. And now fast forward, just a few years fast forward, it is amazing that we have um, electricity is almost nonstop. So that uh, always reminds me of the strides that uh, Bangladesh has made. And very rightly, you have mentioned that uh, we all must, uh, despite some of the challenges that the government still faces, we must commend uh, the present government in taking some very positive steps in power generation and to some extent, of course, in distribution as well uh, to alleviate the bottleneck that we had in the power sector. So let me just uh, move on. Uh, in the rural areas, we still see blackouts and stuff. What do you suppose is the reason for that? Engineer Feroz? Yes, uh, you I have rightly pointed out. Yes, it's, we have still some bottlenecks in, in different distribution areas and also in transmission sector. Transmission uh, sector, as I said, it has increased uh, from 8,000 kilometer to 12,892 12, kilometer. Initially, the, so there was, you know, in the transmission sector, we have got highest voltage is 400 kV. We said, we say 400 kilovolt than 230 kV and 130 kV. These three uh, voltage level transmission lines are there in the system. So these uh, transmission lines are being uh, added regularly whenever needed. And then uh, some uh, any old 130 kV lines are being reconducted with, with higher capacity conductors. So these actions are being taken 
but still actually still there are some areas you know especially in the northern area of bangladesh where actually we lack in a, a number of power plants in that, that area but blackout is normally due to distribution some distribution bottlenecks as well because uh, distribution lines are also very old and they are being replaced one after another but still we have lot to do lot of lots of distribution lines so lot of investments are needed so things are going on but i think uh, we should look into those areas and specifically we can have distributed uh, generation distributed generation in the load centers as much as possible if i hear you correctly engineer feroz mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. as uh, many of us already know in bangladesh we have uh, many would say we have excess generation capacity yes hands right now uh, mm -hmm. But the problem comes in is in transmission and distribution and mm -hmm. serious upgradation is needed in those areas. Uh, that's what you're basically, that's what you're saying, right? Yes. So increasing automation in, uh, and modernization of the transmission and distribution area, I think is what should take priority. Uh, what are your comments on that? You are, you are also right, absolutely right in that area because the system is becoming complex day by day so we have to go for automation i mean automation is already there in the transmission system but we have to go for more automation i mean it has to go up to the distribution system 33 kv and 11 kv now we have got a national load dispatch center which controls all 132 kv grid substations and also some of the 33 kv substations they can they can switch off or they can switch on whenever they need but it has to be dropped down to 11 kV as well, I suppose. But this can be done through um, regional SCADA system, regional SCADA. So th those things are also coming up in, in DPDC or DESCO and NESCO. So they are, they are in, in the process of putting you know, a modern SCADA system. And also NLBC is also being uh, updated and study is going on. They will take a second phase to go for the automation. So yes, and, and the new substations which are coming in the grid substations, they are coming with automation, automated system. So we actually need a full automation, you will write. That will, of course, improve the power system a lot. In many uh, discussions that I have also been a part of in terms of um, uh, power generation, specifically power generation, and the master plan that is being drawn up, and as to how flawed the master plan sometimes is. I mean, the projection is not very accurate. What do you suppose is the, is the reason for it? And let me just uh, give you uh, one of the things that comes up, especially uh, from engineer Tamim, as you know, uh, mm. who was an advisor in the caretaker um, yes. uh, government. Uh, he says that it needs to be, the planning needs to happen from demand forecasting from the ground up. Why do you suppose there is uh, our, our master plans that we put together for the power is uh, not very accurate? Yeah, exactly, exactly. He's absolutely right. It has to come from the demand side and that has to be very much, very accurate. If you can, you can plan the demand very accurately, then you can come up with a generation plan, an accurate generation plan. But the thing is, the the development which what we expect we are we expected for industrial development or commercial development the use of electricity it, that actually that has not taken uh, in that way the generation has gone up but the usage has not gone up in that manner so we do need to assess these uh, forecasts which, uh, very accurately we have still some problems in those areas so I think uh, the government is also looking in that area. Right. And, and another thing is very good that we are now talking about to take a, a, a combined master plan for gas and electricity sector. I see, I see. That will be coming up, yeah. Okay, very good. That also leads me to another question. Yes. Is, uh, given uh, that we are in the middle of the pandemic, which mm -hmm. has shrunk, this is the first time really we have seen a supply side as well as a demand side contraction because of um, the pandemic, uh, even though Bangladesh has still maintained a positive growth last year, continues to, but we're seeing a new resurgence in the COVID situation around the world. As you know, France and Italy, uh, they're going into lockdown. 
Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a pretty serious uh, situation. Even in Bangladesh, we have seen, um, uh, you know, many fold increase in the number of infections and the number of deaths and what have you. How do you yeah. suppose that is going to impact, um, you know, business uh, expansion? And as a consequence, the need for power. This pandemic has affected a lot in the use of power in the industries and other sectors. But surprisingly, in the, in the rural areas, the power uh, demand has not reduced. In the BREB, they, they, as, as they are telling that their demand has increased. They are expanding their system. And they have gone to about 99% access they have given now. So the demand in the rural areas, it is still increasing. Uh, so only the industrial sector, yes, it has affected. And I think uh, it will go because in the uh, pandemic uh, time also, the projects actually, they went on. The execution of the projects didn't stop. It stopped for a while, maybe a month or so, or uh, two months. Then it started in the, the project implementation. And also in the factories also, I suppose, they also started doing some work. Just to recap, Engineer Feroz, uh, mm -hmm. if I hear you correctly, so on the one hand, of course, uh, you agree with the premise that we need to do a ground up uh, demand estimation to project what the future needs are. Uh, mm -hmm. We need intelligent um, uh, distribution in automation, all kinds of automation uh, tools that needs to be deployed so we can um, have better distribution and transmission, intelligent distribution and transmission, exactly. and, and what have you. Um, maybe perhaps uh, pay a little bit more attention to the northern region of Bangladesh. Yes. Are you right? And uh, so uh, if you were to uh, sum up our discussion, Engineer Feroz, uh, yes. one thing before you sum up, I want to ask you, uh, as a, you know, as a recent past very senior member of the power sector, landscape in Bangladesh and uh, also as the uh, managing director of a state-owned uh, large uh, utility company. I want to ask you your, your opinion. If you were to give a um, couple of points uh, in terms of what and how we can do things better in bullet points, what would be your just a few of your recommendations, please? Uh, efficiency to increase efficiency in project implementation already actually as i said we are we are uh, materializing the atp 100% we are doing so still we i think we need to increase uh, the efficiency in the in the project implementation sure. and then also if we talk about uh, power plants we need to have quick maintenance of the power plants and regarding uh, transmission and distribution also the reliability of transmission is very important and the distribution as well. So overall, we need to uh, improve the, also the capacity of the engineers and technicians. It is a continuous capacity building should go on. Our engineers and technicians have done a lot because you, you, as it, we can see in this, uh, the tremendous improvement in the sector. So still we have to do a, a lot. And if you talk about regarding transmission line improvement uh, in the distribution sector, I would, my suggestion would be to go for extra high voltage. That means the 765 kV system we can introduce. And you know, you see that in our Bangladesh, it's a land scarce country. So we cannot put more and more transmission lines as, uh, in, into, the, into the system. Already it is, uh, if you go for into Tongi or the old substations, the people are very, uh, Actually, if they are affected. Yeah. Always the transmission lines in entering the, uh, the substation and the people in those areas are very much annoyed. So we should uh, now think of for going to multi-circuit transmission lines, more and more multi-circuit towers. And then uh, we go for, say, 765 kV and higher volt, uh, voltage transmission line. You know, in the Mirsarai area, we have got a very bottleneck over there small piece of land. In, in the north there is India, in the south it is Bay of Bengal. And in, in, through that corridor we have to railway line, road, transmission line, 132 kV, 230 kV, 400 kV has passed and, and the gas pipeline. So, so many things has passed through that corridor. So that corridor is also becoming, so what we can do, we can shift the 132 kV line or 230 kV line and put their high voltage lines. So these things we need to do. 
Engineer Feroz, that pretty much sums up, I guess, what I was going to ask you next, but you already already <laughs> summed, it, summed it up. So um, I would like to really thank you for taking the time to join us. It's been wonderful to have a senior person like you in our show uh, to help people understand um, uh, the gap that there is in generation and then vis-a-vis -vis, uh, your distribution and transmission and stuff. Thank you for explaining it so very beautifully. Thank you, Akbar. Thank you so much. With that, we'd like to leave it right here uh, with an invitation to our audience to join us again next time that we are live with you. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.